this particular article from um, Nature Communications, very, very well authored here from about uh, four years ago. I'm just going to look at a chunk of the abstract. So it's talking about the mucose. And you have to have this or you are going to be sick. Here we show that the outer mucus of the large intestine forms a, a unique microbial niche with distinct communities. Distinct, that means they have to be there and they are, they know what they are. I mean, they know some of them. I don't think they really understand them completely. But they are distinct communities. They know they're distinct. Including bacteria without specialized mucosilic capabilities. But they also have ones that have the mucosilic capabilities and they are the ones, that, and here it is right here, mucus is a highly regenerative protective lubricant glycoprotein sheet. It secretes over the host intestinal globulet cells. It's the mucus. I'm telling you, it's so important they just missed it. And when that gets burnt through, then you have chronic disease, then it ends up with cancer, then you die. All right, I'm going to go right to the end, and then we're going to start from the beginning and get to the end. The end is right there. That protects you against the entire world. And it, what it is, is it's the membranes in your body, primarily internally, we're going to be talking about now. You do have skin, which is doing the exact same job as this, only external to the world. Your eyes and your, your, your lips and your inside of your nose and all that business that's really close to the outside of the world. Then you have inside of you, you have your intestines and all your blood vessels and all of the things in your body that have to keep everything else out of them. And then you see these little crevices? These are called niches. These niches are where the muc mucus membranes are developed. Bacteria grow them in here. They call them specialists. And there's only a few special species of bacteria that can make these mucuses. Now, what do they do? They are a slime to keep the caustic materials and bacteria and everything else out from you. And the, ba the, the mucus resides in here. The bacteria says, what do you need? I need mucus. Brrr, instantaneously, it gushes out of here. That's why if you have this kind of a disease, you can actually almost be cured within 24 hours. Now, you listen to me and do what, don't do what I'm saying. Don't do what I'm saying. I'm not saying you do anything. I'm saying this is how the body works. And you need to have these certain chemicals in your body. And I will tell you what they are. And they're very, very simple. I mean, the absolute simplest thing you can possibly imagine. And it is all fatty acids primarily. I'm, I'll get into the details. So what do we have? We need this slippery, slimy mucous membrane here to, be, to keep all that stuff out. Otherwise, it starts eating holes in here. Now, if you kill the bacteria that live in here, then you've got a dead niche. What happens there? You get perforations. You get gastrointestinal perforations and then, then it eats a hole through here and then it attacks the vital fit tissue then your body inflames and it goes after this and then it comes down here and it literally eats its own mucus if you don't have enough carbon in your body so your body can attack your own self but it's actually just eating the mucus so that you can prevail in your life by having this carbon available because the mucus is where the carbon is stored. I'm going to go through the whole thing. It's absolutely blow your mind when you find out how simple this is. Because every single organ in your body gets attacked. Everywhere. Everyone. And when they say, oh, well, it's, a, you're, it's attacking its own self or this and that and it's growing tumors, of course it is. It's fighting back against an invasion. It's not that it just attacked itself and created its own hole. No. You need to... Well, let's go through it. I got bit by bit going forward here. But I think there's a good chance that a lot of people can become a lot healthier. Uh, very, very simple. And even that new disease with that um, a postpartum disease is they're literally shorting out the wires in their brain, causing them to be very upset, irritated, irritable, all those kind of things. And the same things happen to all kinds of people. Clinical depression. 
I'm telling you, there's wires in your brain and they are shorting out and I am going to show you exactly what it is and I'll show you the details and then you can do whatever you want, think whatever you want to think. But all I'm caring about is to make sure that people understand what this this particular barrier is all about. If you don't have this, you are screwed. It's, you know, it consists of one or more barriers and it is uh, layers and there's four normally. And then, you know, I think it pretty much it relates to stage four campus, cancer. The first one is the issues and problems and lesions and this and that, and they try to heal them, and the next one, it gets worse, and then by the st stage four, it's into your entire body, systemic, and you can have septic shocks and all kinds of things from eating through this. And you're, even, like, women have, um, well, everybody gets some urinary tracts. I guess everybody, I've never had one, but if, I guess everybody gets them. I know women get them. And... And in that urinary tract infection, you could actually get septicemia and die from that. It's not something simple. And what you want to do is make sure that those ducts are coated with mucus. The body makes it, but if you don't have the right products, and I will show you what the right products are and how you get them, you're going to be sick. Case closed. You're going to be chronically ill, and then one day it's just going to finally blow that hole right through there, and the case is closed for you, and you're in a land of misery. And so I'm telling you, I have seen this, and I, I know this for a fact, because I have people that are in my family that are in the medical area, the pharmacists and so forth, and told me that within 24 hours they can turn some of the stuff around. Guy goes in, with, you're going to die in 15 minutes if you don't take this. They give it to him. I mean, it's not 15 minutes, you know what I'm saying. But some of them are right on death's door. I mean, uh, Whoopi Goldberg, I think, just came back from that septicemia. Now, I don't know what they did for her in the hospital. But I would have done what I'm going to show you. At least I would have done that way beforehand, but I would have tried even at the last second because it seems to be that your, your, your immune system with mucus can squirt out mucus instantaneously if it needs it. But it has to have the stuff to do it. And of course the bacteria has to be there. That's a real problem. Because once you lose that, now you got a real issue. That's when they start eating through here. That's supposed to live there. And, and create mu mucus right there. That's what it does. That's what they do. Now you saw it said they try right away the E. coli to rebuild itself. Yes, it is a, it's, it's required for your health. So as soon as they give you antibiotics, you're sick. Now this is from the uh, National Library of Medicine. So this is a big, you know, it's a incredible source if you take them as credible. And this is all the different, there's comm commensal and pathogenic. One of them hurts you, one of them is good for you. Now, every mammal on the planet is colonized with this stuff. And there's 500 to 1,000 of them. So it says, as well as cold-blooded animals, everything. Approximately warm temperature estimated that the cells in the human population alone, E. coli is frequently the first bacterium to colonize human infants. Because you have to be able to digest your food and work with it. That's why it colonizes them. I mean, it's a long life, long, lifelong colonizer. E. coli, arguably the best understood, but probably not well understood, of all model organisms. Yet the essence of how E. coli colonizes, it's the best one understood, yet we don't know anything about it. <laughs> colonizes and or causes disease, still not completely understood. Oh my God, it never ends. Certainly innate immunity, adaptive immunity, and bacterial cell-to-cell -cell communication play important roles in modulating the populations of the 500 to 1,000 fully un not understood different commensal species in the intestines. However, this topic will not be a focus. <laughs> i got to stop. Okay, I'm, uh, I'm going to try to calm down here, but sometimes it's just, it's just overwhelming. Okay, mucous membranes. This is the key. Here's what this is it. This is your life. If you have a problem with this, you're healthy. you're not going to be healthy. You're going to be sick. You see these little pockets here? You hear what I'm talking about? Niches. That's where they live. They live in these little niches in here, and they populate them. And they say, "Hey, I'm in here. I'm going to make anything you need. You guys need mucus today? Yeah, 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 yeah. You got all kind of guy eat some tacos. He can eat hot wings. Oh man, you're going to have to squirt out some mucus. No problem. <laughs> Instantly." instantly that will flood this thing with mucus. 
And if it attracts harder, it will flood it with more. And if it attracts harder than that, it will go and find some other bacteria to help it. It will create thicker mats of mucus. Now, if somehow something goes wrong, you kill that guy, and his whole community is dead. You say, come on, I got, we, we got the hot wings coming in today. Hey, hey, hey. Nobody's answering back. He says, I need mucus. Hey, hey. No mucus. What happens? It starts invading in these little holes, which were the niches where the bacteria was. Well, now you got hot wings coming in here. Next thing you know, it eats through that tiny little thing, and boom, it hits here. Then what happens? It says, we're going to come in and send in some stuff. It's going to inflame, and it's going to be swollen, and all that business. You're going to be tender and all that stuff, but we're going to try to fight it. We're going to try to fight it. I'm going to send the stuff the body's got. We're going to work on this. And then they say, wow, it's all inflamed all by itself. No, it didn't inflame all by itself. It inflamed because the mucus was bad. The pockets got invaded. The pockets got broken through. The tissue got invaded by a foreign fighter. The body fights back. The doctor says, don't fight back. You're fighting something that isn't there. The body says, no, 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 it's there. The doctor says, oh, you don't know what you're doing. And they give him something to say, just let it go. <laughs> I'm telling you, they don't understand this is an invasion. So it's layer one, layer two, layer three, layer four, stage four cancer. Here it is right here. Mucous membranes line the digestive system, the respiratory, the reproductive tracts, and the primary barrier between the external world and the interior of the body. Everything in your body is separated out from that extracellular material. Do not invade me. If I can't keep you out, you will invade and you will make me sick. And that's what's happened. In an adult human, the total surface area of the mucosa is about 400 square meters, while the surface area of the skin is about 2 square meters. 400 square meters inside you has to be slathered with goo continuously. They are at several places contiguous that it's come and go. Skin at the nostrils, the lips, the mouth, the eyelids, and so forth. They come and go, but they always coat everything. And then they have mucus in these areas, along with providing a physical barrier. They also contain key parts of the immune system and serve as the interface between the body proper and the microbiome. That is all the bi bacteria that I have been telling you that we have to know these databases. Without that, it's everything's a guess, and they've guessed wrong. They don't understand what's happening here. Your body is being invaded. Every single cancer is the same. Every single cancer is the same. Something breaks through. It's a chronic thing. Stage one, oh, yeah, it's terrible. Let's do this, let's do that. Well, we went to stage two. Yeah, well, let's give them a little this and that. No, protect the thing. Give them some goo. Mucus is the deal. You know, I'm not a doctor, but I'm going to tell you right now, this is the way the body works. Everybody do anything they want. But I would like to know if anybody has any experiences with this. This is very, very critical to the health of literally the human population. And health is out of control. My brother, and my, all my, everybody I know has some kind of thing that's aching and paining them to death. And then they go to the doctor and it gets worse. I'm not kidding you. They don't know what to do. They have no clue about this. You ask them, well, how is RA, how does RA happen? I can tell you right now how it happens. I'll show you. Okay, let's listen to this and explain what's going on. Painful and swollen joints, deformity in the hands. Deforming arthritis is one of the signs of rheumatoid arthritis. Dr. Eric Madison is a rheumatologist at Mayo Clinic. He says rheumatoid arthritis is quite different from the more common osteoarthritis. It's an autoimmune disease, which means that the immune system is overactive for some reason that we don't know and decides to attack the lining of the joints, causing inflammation in the lining, which leads to damage. All right, he's totally wrong. What's going on here is the tissues that's in here are extremely fine membranes, and they are slimy and slick as can be with the mucus and the, the, the things that we were just talking about to give them the flexibility 
and the fluid in here to make it very, very smooth. You've got tendons running all over this and all that. What happens is you lose your mucous membranes, you lose your protective. The bone gets invaded, and the bone specifically gets invaded because now it's being attacked by salts. These bones are not supposed to be attacked by salts. They are in a separate membrane from the rest of the body. Bones are attacked by salts, and other things live in salts. That's why all my mud fossils, there is no bones. They are all transitioned away, and, and there are... are the, the rest of the body is perfect. I'm going to show you a bone right now. All right, hold on, let's get over here. <laughs> Excuse me, i got to get to where i got some light. All right, that's a bone. That is a bone from a, a, a mud fossil. You see how perfect it is? That's the periosteum, which is the wrapping, the tunica. Not only that, you can actually see where it was wrapped. You see that? You see that triangle? They will all have that on there. That's the tunica. It literally comes around, wraps, and grows these seams. And I'm sure they, they come bigger and as they grow. But that's inside that little hole there. You see all those little tiny holes inside that bigger hole? That is a ligament attachment. And those balls inside there have all these additional little balls that block in there. And they, they, they don't pull out of there ever. Now, you see there is no bone. Well, wait a minute. You might be able to see there is one spot right there. It still has a tiny white spot. But what happens is the bones get invaded. They do not like salt. But everything else loves salt. These things will be look just like brand new in the salt because they like salt. They live in salt. 7.35, 7.45 in your body. They like that. But your bones don't. So what happens is the lining here gets torn up and scarred and destroyed because there is no membrane anymore. The bone gets torn up and destroyed and the salts invade. That's rheumatoid arthritis. Okay, my friends, today we're going to be going through how I believe you can protect yourself and enhance your immune system. And this is not guesses. It's based on a lot of work. And we're going to go through the cellular living tissues and which requires help from all kinds of things. But they're the part of your body that's your, your body. Then there's other things called extracellular parts. Those are body fluids. They're not tissues. There's bacteria in there. There's blood cells. There's all kinds of metals and salts and so forth. Now, the blood delivers and picks up the trash. They deliver the goods that the things need, and the gases and the oxygen and the glycogen, all the different things that you need to, to, to be nurtured and live a healthy life. That's what the blood brings down. It also picks up trash, and it does it with carbon and metals. It's called carboxylation. I've talked about it quite a bit. They are the ones that transport things which requires carbon and requires all these different transition metals and there is almost a hundred of them and it requires salts as well because that's the the way they transfer molecules is by ph you don't have to get too deep into that it's just as simple as that there's a certain area that's going to be a higher pH, ph and then another one is going to be lower and because these transition metals work on this tiny 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 ph changes they can pick up and deliver things now your immune system, what is that? They always say, oh, you got a bad immune system. Well, what, what's wrong with it? You got holes in it. Listen to me. You got holes in it. Immune system is a physical barrier first. Everything on you keeps everything else away from you. Your skin doesn't let anything into you. Your veins don't let things go in and out of the blood system. Your tissues in your organs, which I have showed over and over and over, are, are coated with fascia and things, and they, they do not allow any invasion of chemicals that they don't want. It's, you have four layers of mucus and membranes that isolate you. The first layer is a slimy mucus layer that is regenerated almost instantly if you have the right stuff in your body. If a person is ready to die from septicemia and things like that, 
do, you know, I'm not saying specifically septicemia in any specific case, but there are conditions where they go into the doctor, you're going to die, you're going to die in 15 hours if you don't get help, boom, they give them a little uh, stuff into their intestines, bang, they're good to go. And, and they will heal themselves. The mucus will seal up these invasive areas. Now your body still has to deal with the things that have invaded. You may not get out of it. You may die. But you, if, once you're invaded, you're invaded. Now your body is calling on its all the different mechanisms within the body that can go after these things. But prior to that, the mechanism in the body is your immune system, which is a physical four-layer barrier. And the invasion of unauthorized molecules ends up with infections. What do infections do? They cause chronic diseases. You don't know you're having these problems. Now, why would you lose this mucus? Why would you lose these membranes? It's unbelievable. I'm going to show you exactly why you'd lose them. But what you end up with is chronic diseases and they're persistent infections. It's all they are. And then it will end up with cancer. You need fatty acids and carbon. That's what makes your membranes and mucus. The bacteria starts everything. Bacteria creates the heavy, not heavy metals, but the transition metals. And it creates enzymes to break down molecules to be used. Then the carbon and the fatty acids make your cells, your cell linings. All your cell, your membranes are made out of fatty acids and carbon. Let me show you that right now. Okay, my friends. Now, as I said, I believe the body is attacking itself to try to fix itself because it's being invaded. Now, it's really not attacking itself. It's trying to attack the the destruction of the tissues in this site and it cannot deal with this invader now this is what's called prostaglandins prostaglandins are a group of physiologically active lipid compounds now lipids are what your cell membranes are made of and i'm going to show you that in a minute they are called eicosanoids and having diverse hormone like effects in animals, hormone like effects. They cr make things happen. They, they create uh, proteins and things. Now, prostaglandins have been found in almost every tissue, every tissue in humans and other animals. You have to have these in your tissues or you're going to have trouble. So, what are they? They are derived enzymatically from the fatty acid, arachidonic acid. Now, let's go see what that is. Don't worry if you don't understand the chemistry. All I'm doing is showing you this, that particular acid that we just saw a minute ago, which is a fatty lipid acid that is 20 carbons. You see them all? C, 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 C. There's 20 of them, and at the end it has a functional group. This happens to be carboxyl. Castor oil has 18 carbons and has hydroxyl. Same thing, functional group does almost the same exact same thing. And in the chemistry of enzymes in your body, the push from the enzymes could create anything out of those, these molecules because they are chemistry sets to work with what's presented to them. And this is what your body needs to be presented with or a very reasonable facsimile castor oil. You see this? I talked about this the other day. The FDA just approved this drug for postpartum depression. These women are getting short circuits in their brains. And in 48 hours, they can recoat those nerve sacs. And I'm going to show you that I can basically prove this. All right? What they have done, this new drug is uh, Brexoclone or something. Uh, whatever it is. I'll show you in a second. So I started down the track trying to figure out what this new drug was, Brexoclone, whatever, how you never pronounce it. Now, so I read and read and read, and I get down to this point where it talks about findings from several studies implicate peripartum fluctuations in reproductive hormones. Those are the things that affect your body with things that make you run and jump and fight and scream and get all kinds of crazy. I mean, when you go through through adolescence, these are, these are the things that make you nuts. <laughs> I mean, that's just a fact. 
having pivotal pathophysical roles in this postpartum depression, the rapid decline in the levels of these hormones occurs after delivery and so forth. So what is this thing? Well, what is that thing? So I, of course, looked at this thing. And I read and read and did the chemistry and looked at it, and it says just exactly this. It says newly discovered membrane, as I'm talking about, is what protects you, progesterone receptors, so they're membrane progesterone receptors. Progester progesterone is this thing that they give you to hurt you, including these and these and these and these with its activity at these receptors about a magnitude more potent than at the GABA receptor. The action of these allopregnanolones at these receptors may be related. Well, it is related. In part, to its neuroprotective, what's that? Nerves. It shields these nerves. Not only that, wait till you hear this. And anti, whatever that is, anti, it's whatever it's anti something, anti gonadotropic properties. Like we could look that up, but I'm sure it's good if it's anti because it's, some, it's killing something else off. Now, listen to this. Also, like progesterone, recent evidence has shown that allergies is an active receptor of the pregnisone X receptors. And there's another part in here that says it only works to do this particular job, unlike other... Let me see if I can find it. This is the clincher. Here it is along with the other inhibitory neurosteroids, allo, this thing, pregnagolone, appears to have little or no action at other ligand-gated ion channels. Those are wires through the brain, including the this N NMDA, AMPA, canine, glycine receptors. Now, let's go see what this ligand-gated ion channel is. It's a wire, and it has it has insulation around it. You see that? Look this up. Chloride channels. What do they do? Chloride channels are a functionally and structurally diverse group of anine selective channels involved in processing, including the regulation of excita excitability, <laughs> going crazy, of the neurons, skeletal, cardiac, and smooth muscle, cell volume regulation, transepithelial salt transport, this acidification of internal and extracellular compartments, the cell cycle and apoptosis, which is a programmed cell death. These are absolutely the most important things in your body. If you don't have these wires insulated correctly, or they're bad and they're cracked, and they're able to leak their voltage into the extracellular material that I talked about that is not part of your cellular matrix. If you, it's being invaded, it's being caused, you, you, your arm could shake, you could twist, you can't move, you got Parkinson's disease. All these things, I believe now, are the chronic effect of the breakdown of mucous membranes. And let's go look at what mucous membranes should work like. Let's just go a little deeper into this, and then we're going to go into the mucus. And it's very, very simple. It says, chloride channel is a functional, structurally diverse group of anion, anion selective channels. That means voltage selective. Involved in processing, including the regulation of the excitability of your neurons, which are your, your cellular impulses to do things your skeletal impulses, your cardiac and smooth muscle impulses, your cell volume regulation, these other things, the salt transport, acid, acidification, extracellular compartments, cell cycle and apoptosis, the, the, the killing of the cells that should be getting ready to die. And your, your body does all this through these channels by sending these signals, and if they get out of that channel, you're in trouble. It's just like your computer short now. Now, and it's, here's it says exactly what it says. Listen, excluding the transmitter-gated GABA and glycine receptors, see separate table, well-characterized chloride channels can be classified as certain members of the voltage-sensitive CIC subfamily. It's a voltage sensitive. What it is, they send the pulses down there. If you short that out, if you don't have the goop around that thing, 
and it's isolated from all the other stuff, it shorts out. Then you go crazy. Who knows what's going to happen to you? And that's what's happened to those women. I'm always guaranteed. And if they put castor oil on these people, I don't think they're going to have to go in for this $28,000 a month treatment or whatever it costs. A ridiculous amount of money. And they go in there for 60 hours. They flush this through their system. I'm telling you, you drink a good little castor oil, and I think you might find that you don't need to, to run over there for that. And, you know, of course, you need some carbon, too. But the castor oil has a carbon. I'm thinking castor oil with a little extra carbon. And now I'm going to show you why I say that. All right. This site is um, has a lot of organic stuff and a very, very healthy attitude towards life. Now, um, let's see if we can find it here. All right, castor oil. Here we go. And this is their write-up of castor oil. And it is, uh, it's as good as I've seen. And this is done by uh, Dr. Dickerson. They had a doctor and, a, and another doctor uh, do this, health doctors as well as a medical doctor and a dentist, I guess. And they're talking about castor oil and how it affects the body and where it was when it was discovered. It's 4,000 years ago, one of the oldest things been known to man. I, I, was, I read that Cleopatra put it in her eyes to keep them white. And you can put it in your eyes, your ears, you can drink it, you can put it on your skin. There's nothing, absolutely no problem with it that I can determine. I've been gushing myself with it. And they say to put packs on, and it, it sort of subsides within 24 hours. So you have to do it you know, more than once. I mean, you don't just do it one time and walk away. Um, ba 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 it is the palma Christi due to its resemblance to the palm of the hand. Now, listen to this. The first medicinal prescription of castor oil may have been in pre-Christian times. Egyptian physicians instructed to chew the seeds of the plant with beer to relieve constipation, while the Aztecs used the oil externally to treat skin lesions and hemorrhoids. The Chinese used it to induce childbirth and expel the placenta and it also <laughs> i'm not kidding you i was told that it absolutely affects premenstrual you know um, cramps and all that it has a very good effect on it and you rub it right down in the area of the you know where you get the cramps now considering these specific historic uses how did using this ancient oil topically in the form of a castor oil pack become part of btgs in fact, it never would have without the work of Edgar Casey, an ordinary man with an extraordinary gift. Now, Edgar, Edgar Casey came up with all these ideas to do things. He was healing people, and, and anyway, he he said that it has over thirty physiological effects, castor oil, including all these things, including your lymphatic system, which is nothing more than your um, makes the the um, secretions that give you the um, mucus and so forth that's part you know that's why they re remove the lymph nodes sometimes when the guy gets cancer because they say oh the lymph nodes are all inflamed too no the you know, lymph nodes are trying to do what they're supposed to do because something else is evading so they're trying to fight off two things at the same time while the doctor's giving them antibiotics to kill something else and then ra irradiating the whole thing i mean it's not good not a good situation you need to fix that that coating and stop that invader and then fix the body. You got to get rid of the source of the invasion. And this is what does it. Stimulating liver, gallbladder, all these things, dissolving, removing adhesions, lesions, gallstones, relieving pain, reducing inflammation, swelling, improving intestinal. And I can guarantee all those things have worked for me. I agree with that 100%. Stimulating, demonstrating immune system. This, I'm telling you right now, it's very, very, very powerful stuff. And uh, let's see, what do we got here? Uh, the oil may also have antiviral properties. A recent a, a substance in the bean has been shown to kill the HIV virus in test tube trials. Researchers at the University of Texas Southwestern Medical Center found that the recent attacks and uh, destroys both the virus as well as the cells in which it resides. <laughs> Holy smoke, I didn't know that. Interestingly, 1913, Douglas Montgomery doctor reported his belief that castor oil acts on the ascending colon exactly and he also found the oil indispensable when treating diseases of the skin. Montgomery felt the toxins generated in the hostra of the colon caused many of these skin conditions. Absolutely. It, 
and I show you why. The body actually turns on itself and eats the mucus which is there to protect you if you don't have the right chemistry in you. And I'm going to show you how you can get the right chemistry. He regarded this area as a favorable location for anaerobic t -t 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 bacteria. And yes, he was correct. Naturopathically, this makes sense considering the important relation the digestive tract has with the skin. Now, let's look a little deeper. I mean, it's all skin is skin. I don't care where it is. I don't care where you have it. It's on the outside. It's on the inside. It's the skin of your eyes. It's the skin of your ears. It's the skin of your testicles. It's the skin of your tongue. It's skin. It's the skin of your stomach. It's the skin of your esophagus. It's the skin of your intestines and your lumen and your rectum, vaginas, breast tissue. Every single thing in you separates every single thing else out or it will be invaded and it will become chronically diseased until it decides to kill you.